experience. I'm Jack Ryder, author, presenter, investigative journalist, curator of the exhibit. I know all there is to know about Batman's greatest feats. This is not a dramatization. What you're about to experience is based on eyewitness accounts and years of my own research. The Arkham Experience is a dramatization of real-world events for the purposes of entertainment. All events and individuals within this exhibit are professional reenactments by actors. This exhibit is in no way linked to or authorized by Bruce Wayne or any member of the Wayne Estate. We begin at the Arkham Asylum for the Criminally Insane. Batman had apprehended Joker like so many times before, but this night, this night was different. The maniac had prepared a trap in the midst of Batman's deadliest foes. Can you smell the excitement in the air? Ha <laughs> No? Must have been one of the guards then. Croc, old boy. Is that you? I've got your scent, Batman. I will hunt you down. Joker spraying nearly every killer in Arkham. <laughs> Don't like to think about it, but uh, at least I made it out. Great night for a party! <laughs> <laughs> Some party. Batman was able to thwart Joker's schemes. But the seeds of evil planted that day would only grow. Funny thing is, we didn't even have an Arkham Asylum. We had to make do with Barkham Asylum. And it was only for dogs. Bad dogs. I'm kidding, I'm kidding. We had the Asylum. <laughs> Boy, it got juicy in there. As a last resort, Joker used his own experimental Titan mixture. The super serum warped his body to match his twisted mind. But it wasn't enough to defeat Batman. The strong man Bane was secretly imprisoned and experimented on in Arkham's depths to create a powerful new strength serum, Titan. Serial killer Victor Zaz was let loose on the island, claiming several more lives that night marked indelibly on his skin. Harley Quinn. Once a promising young psychiatrist, she returned to the asylum to terrorize it as Joker's sidekick. If she was just the sidekick, your Joker's getup must have been skimpy. Me? I don't lace my corset that tight. Need room to laugh. Following the fall of the asylum, Gotham Skid Rows were turned into the super prison, Arkham City. An urban hell, where the only rules were made by the villain ringleaders and their gangs. I know, I was on the ground, and so was Batman. The only way to get by in this place is to get ourselves some respect! Fear! That's how we get respect! Show them all how we do things! Ah, uh, you know, if you, you pick the right side and then piss off the boss, <laughs> you were set. At least, uh, still a bad shot up anyway. Bring out the defendant! You certainly know how to keep a girl hanging, Harv. Court is in session! Grab him and cut him in two! Batman cleaned out Arkham City. Two-Face, Penguin, Ra's al Ghul, even the Joker. Batman's nemesis died poisoned by his own chemical compound. A tragic irony.
Just to be clear, they turned Gotham's low-income neighborhoods into a privately owned prison state. And it didn't work. <sighs> well, there goes my pitch for mayor. Professor Hugo Strange was the madman pulling the strings behind Arkham City. Intending to destroy the prison and its inhabitants, he instead died within its walls. Raish al Ghul, head of the League of Assassins, was obsessed with making Batman his successor. But al Ghul underestimated Batman, and it would be his downfall. Professional killer Deadshot was hired to assassinate several VIP targets, like myself, and Bruce Wayne and Batman. Close calls with death that night. I love this take on Deadshot. Very problematic. Talia Al Ghul, once second in command of the League of Assassins. Sadly, the spark between her and Batman was extinguished at Joker's last stand, along with her life. Victor Freeze, this brilliant but cold scientist, would do anything to protect his wife Nora, whether that meant opposing or aiding Batman. Jarvis Tetch, the Mad Hatter, a real head case. A hypnotist fixated on fantasies. The only thing he sought more than his Alice was to control Batman. Basil Carlo, Clayface, worked for Joker, impersonating the criminal mastermind who hid behind the scenes. Quite the performance, and his last. Solomon Grundy wasn't just a nursery rhyme. Penguin discovered this legendary monster under the Iceberg Lounge and put him to use as rancid, undead muscle. Batman and Joker's rivalry finally ended in Arkham City. I don't doubt Batman would have saved the maniac if he could. But the Titan poison ensured this was Joker's last laugh. Wow. This is very existential for me. I always wondered what I'd look like dead. Answer? Waxy. My Batman never held me like that. Maybe I went overboard on the chloroform? City's darkest hour was yet to come. Gathering Batman's remaining foes into an unholy alliance, the crazed Scarecrow plunged Gotham into a waking nightmare. Welcome to Gotham, the city of fear. You thought me gone, didn't you, Batman? Lost in the waters beneath Arkham. But like all submerged forgotten fears, eventually I returned. My fire crew was trapped, but we owe Batman our lives. He just kept pushing himself past the limit. Batman turned back the tide of fear, reclaimed the city. But at what cost? In defeating Scarecrow, his identity was revealed to the world. In the end, Ivy was more plant than person, yet she chose to help the people of Gotham. She sacrificed herself to neutralize Scarecrow's toxin clouds with Scarecrow? plant life. Where I come from, something like this would be considered tasteless. Whereas here, it's for kids. <laughs> The pyro 
megalomaniac Garfield Linz thought he could indulge in the chaos, striking not just Gotham's buildings, but the fire departments protecting them. Who was the Arkham Knight? The mysterious figure seemed to aid Scarecrow, but vanished after his defeat. I believe his methods were very similar to the vigilante, Red Hood. Huh. Don't know this guy, but he's got a real face for crowbars. As always, Edward Nigma forced Batman to participate in his riddles. Even capturing Batman's sometime ally Catwoman as incentive. Laszlo Valentine is one sick individual. A freakish surgeon whose idea of making his patients better was changing them into featureless dolls. I personally investigated Deacon Blackfire, a cult leader who thought human blood made him immortal. Crazy, of course, but he still tried to sacrifice me. Slade Wilson, the super soldier known as Deathstroke, came to Gotham that night leading a whole militia, but his vendetta was with one man, Batman. of Herrick's death sent shockwaves through Gotham City. It seemed unbelievable. Impossible. Batman's legacy would live on in many ways, including persistent underworld rumors of an even more fearsome vigilante. The Demon Bat. Terror of Gotham's criminals. But let me ask you, would the events you've witnessed not drive any man to a place of darkness? See, what I like is, he could have called himself Money Man, but he went with Bat. And that's a choice. Several years after faking his death, Bruce Wayne finally returned. Drawn back to the light by the metahuman superheroes from Metropolis. They asked Batman to join the Justice League. He accepted. And so, the story of Bruce Wayne, the Batman, continues. Far from the mean streets of the city that made him. I'm Jack Ryder. Thanks for taking this journey with me. Wow, they're just like us. I'd blow him right up if I could. <laughs> Wait, that's it? No more backstory? No more jingles? Tell me there's a gift shop. I want a pressed penny. <laughs> 